Okay, so in this episode we're going to do exercise 2-3. Uh, first we're going to look at the erase command and some of the selection tools and the copy command and a few other commands. And so, uh, let's begin. Uh, so I'm starting off with the last file uh, that I created. So I want to create a new file. This is exercise 2-3 and this file is exercise 2-2. So command, uh, control shift S. There we go. Control shift S. And let's just do 2-3. There we go. So now this is 2-3. And let's begin with the erase command. So the erase command is real simple. Uh, I know the text uh, tells you to come up here and look for it. Again, um, to me, that really takes the focus off your drafting and, and focus on concentrating on understanding what line does what. And so I'm a, a huge proponent of keyboard commands. So E for erase, spacebar, and it looks like, oop, I already erased that line. So this is the line that they wanted me to erase. Uh, from here to here. And so, erase, E, spacebar, and I can select, I can select the line, I can select multiple lines, I can use the selection tools, I can select everything, and it will, you can see how it went from a, a really white line to a shaded gray, so. Control Z. So erase, E, spacebar, select what you want to erase. Uh, with the left click, spacebar, it's gone. You could also hit delete. Um, I like hitting the spacebar, uh, but you can hit right click and it's gone. And you're out of the command. All right, so that is the erase. Um, oh, I was also supposed to erase this one eight. Oh, I guess I erased that one eighth inch uh, line that I drew earlier. Um, and so on page two dash twenty four, it goes over the select the selection tools. There's the selection windows. Uh, there's the window, and then there's the crossing window. And so we'll go over both of those and the lasso uh, sections. And so you have, you don't need to type in any command. It's just left click and you're automatically in a selection tool. This is a selection window. Anything inside, any objects inside this window, whether it's a circle, rectangle, any type of geometry will get selected. And on this side, this is the... Uh, crossing window and it you just have to cross in a part of an object and it will select and so let me give you an example right here I'll select everything or I won't and that's useful uh, in its own right you know what if I didn't need to select you know these lines and I just want to be real quick about it boom done so I use a selection window. But what if I wanted to select, um, you know, just this or, you know, just this line and these two lines. Um, so I use that crossing window. And you'll notice that if I left click, the window, selection window is blue and it goes to the right. And the crossing window is green and it goes to the left. Um, you get used to it. Uh, there is also the lasso. If you left click and hold, you can, wherever your mouse moves, and so you can pretty much uh, be a surgeon with your selection, and, and, um, and sometimes that's helpful. And you can do it the other way as well. And so this acts like the selection window, 
and this acts like the crossing window. And those are the selection tools using left click. So that's the window, crossing window, and lasso windows. All right, let's move on to the copy command. That's 2-26, and the copy command. We'll go ahead and copy a circle, and I will show you how you can copy in different ways. So CO, space bar, and I'll just use my selection crossing window. Uh, I can select from any of my O snaps, uh, but I want to select from here because I think the book wants me to drop it here at this endpoint. Um, what's also be beautiful about copy is I can copy from here, and if O snaps gets in the way. Um, you know, there's too many conflicting things and you don't want to conflict, you can come up here, anywhere up here. It does not matter. And let's just say you want to move this uh, horizontally. I can use ortho and ensure that this will line up horizontally uh, with this circle. And I can specify, uh, you know, maybe I want four feet, three inches. And where did that go? Oh, it went way over there. And what if I need this line and this line to connect? Using ortho and copy and a combination of commands allows you to do this. And so as a drafter, you have to become, you have to develop this drafting sense of mind in using a combination of these commands to you know, help facilitate whatever you're trying to draw. And, um, and so I'm, I'm trying to expose you to, uh, oh, you know, a lot of the different um, techniques that I use on a, on a daily basis in my firm. Uh, and so that is the copy command. Um, so CO, and I can copy from, you know, any one of these grips. And if I need to put it right next to this one, and I can do multiple copies. And right now you're seeing ortho at its worst. Let me click that off. And I can just continue. Uh, there's another command that's, let's just say I need like 400 of these. I don't need to do 400 copies of in the copy command. There's another command for that. And we'll get into that later. And so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete that. And that is the copy command. You can also copy and specify an angle. And we'll do that with this rectangle. Go ahead and draw this line right here real quick. So CO copy right here and oop, let me go get off of ortho. Uh, I can type in 18 inches, that's uh, one foot, six inches, and then hit tab. I'm gonna use um, that dynamic uh, input, and then 45. And so what this is telling AutoCAD is that I'm moving this in a 45 degree angle, 18 inches away from the base point that I selected. And the base point is right here. I'm gonna hit enter, and there you have it. And that is that. My drawing doesn't look exactly like the figure in uh, on page uh, 2-27, but this is figure 2-3.4. Oop, I'm sorry. I misspoke. This is figure 2-3.5 on page 2-29. All right, let's talk about the move command. The move command works uh, very similar to uh, how the uh, copy command works. Uh, let's just say I want to move this, and I want to I want to make this look like the figure on 2-3.5. Um, so I can go ahead and move this. Hit the letter M, spacebar. 
Oh, and it's helpful if you select. So you can do, you can move or copy things certain ways. I can hit move, spacebar, select the object, spacebar, and then move however I want. But I, you can select first, and then um, identify your base point. And my base point is going to be the midpoint, and I want to drop it right here. Do I need to move this again? Yeah, let's move this again. Why not? Uh, and let me move this using ortho. And I use ortho to ensure that the it drops straight down. There's no deviations from where I wanted the midpoint of this line. Let me go back. I grabbed it from this midpoint because I'm assuming that in the figure it is on that midpoint line. And I want it to stay there, and so I'm using ortho to bring that down. And that is that. Uh, the rotate command. The rotate, the rotate command is a little different. Let's get into that. That is on page uh, 2-29 at and 2-30. And I'm going to select the midpoint to the left of the same rectangle, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And so let's go over the rotation command. So right here, this midpoint, and I can use ortho if I'm if I want to move this in a 90 degree increments. And so I'm good with that, and I can just move this down a little bit. So again, I just use the move command, M spacebar, select spacebar, and then move this down accordingly. So let me M select. And, you know, if, if this is getting too much information or, you know, the, all these snaps are, are conflicting, I can go down here, over here, and left click, and then just drag it down. And it's perfectly okay to do that. I know when I first started using AutoCAD, I thought I had to select something on the object. You do not. And I highly recommend, if you are of that mindset, Trust, trust me on this. Where it, when I say it's okay to, to come out here, um, I don't know why I got that in my mindset. No one really showed me that it's okay to do this, and um, I think it's very useful. Because when you are drafting, your O snaps get in the way and, with each other, especially when you know you got a lot of congestion right here. And you're trying to move stuff and 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 modify things, and you're like, uh, I'm over this. I don't know what I want to do with this. All right, so let's go ahead and undo this, and let's rotate this 45 degrees. Ah, yeah. So rotate. You can determine how um, how many degrees you want, and the way AutoCAD works. Let me. Let me show you this real quick. Let's let's draw a circle. And we have 0 We have 180 over here. degrees uh, right here you have 90 and everything in between so from 0 you know 45 30 and, oh, you know, all the way to 9 all the way to 180 right but in AutoCAD it goes reverse from 0 to negative 90 and everything in between negative 45 negative 90 all the way to negative 180. And so just keep that in mind, especially when you're using the rotation tool. Go ahead and delete that. I want to rotate this, according to the text, 45 degrees, but negative 45 degrees. And so I'm going to type in negative 45. And if you forget, don't worry. AutoCAD will remind you that you forgot. 
if I was to forget to type in the negative 45 and just type in 45, it took me to 45. So, oops. Rotate, select the object, right here, midpoint, negative 45, enter. And I'm just going to move this so it looks a little clear. Oop, it looks a little clear. And let me turn on my ortho. There we go. And isn't that lovely? All right. So let's talk about the scale command. Scale command, you can use one of two ways. Uh, I know the textbook on page 2-32 talks about scale factor. Um, you can use it that way. I use it a different way. Um, the scale factor that AutoCAD is referring to is in decimal, so like 0.5 is half. And so if you want to, you know, if you want to reduce an object to the size of half, uh, you can just use a scale factor. Um, but a lot of times in architecture, you don't know that you need to scale something up or down in half or, you know, double. Um, you know, sometimes you need to do something. And let me just draw something arbitrarily. And let's take a measurement real quick. Or actually, you know what? No, let's not take a measurement. Let's check this out. So the length. Uh, so this is three feet, six inch, three and sixteenths. Um, and let's just say I wanted this at This is six or uh, seven, seven and a quarter. Let's just say I want this at five, five inches. So what I typically do, and let me see if I can go ahead and um, just draw a five inch line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of this line so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I just went to the properties. Um, I'm also going to make another line down here and change the color. Oop, change the color of that. All right. I want this entire line to be this size. And when I use the scale command, typically what I do is I know I want to specify a particular base point. The base point is just the point that you're going to use as a reference. And so what I want to do is I want to move this from this endpoint to this endpoint. And now this is aligned with this. So the scale command is as follows, SC spacebar. You select your object that you want to scale, spacebar. And now you specify the base point. It tells you specify a base point. And I can, I can do this in such a way. And you know, some students want to just click to this endpoint and think that's okay. No, there's there's one more step to it, and that is hitting the letter R for reference. And what I'm telling AutoCAD now is I want to reference the original length first. And so I just left clicked on over there and left clicked over here. And now I just click where I want it to be and bam now that is five inches I can delete these construction lines and I'm good to go I can also use scale to increase the size using the um, scale factors and so like if I want to scale this up twice the size at the number two Boom. Twice the size. If I want this, scale this to half the size, specify a base point, hit 0.5. And so, typically I like to use um, the scale command, you know, when I'm 
I'm not really doing a survey, but you know, I can get a screenshot of an overview of a property and I have one particular measurement and I want to get an idea before I go out and do a site visit and start measuring on the site. I like to print out a plan, a site plan first, and then I'll go and I'll just write down my measurements and, and then I'll come back to the office and correct everything. So I, I, I do a little rough sketch first uh, using like a Google Earth or Google Maps uh, overhead view before I uh, you know go out to site and do field measurements All right and so on page 2-33 uh, it talks about selecting the correct base point um, you know go ahead and read over that play with that um, you should be fine but that is how you use scale and we go ahead and delete that because this assignment calls just for this. Make sure Control S. Ah, be sure to hit Control S uh, after you um, are working for like five, ten minutes. You know, AutoCAD does have a um, an auto save feature, um, but all the years that I've been drafting, I know that that auto save is is great and it works most of the time but for whatever reason it's that catch 22 that some of the times it doesn't work and you put in two hours worth of work yeah people start to cry so anyway um be sure to hit save control s like every five to ten minutes make it make it a habit I know. make it like a nervous twitch um, and so uh, be sure to say uh, plot this out as PDF control P uh, previous plot if you've already um, and then that'll bring up a lot of what you've done and now that we added stuff I want to make sure that the window that I selected will cover everything it doesn't so I'm gonna redo this window left click for my first base point, left click again, second base point, preview, voila, plot, and then I'm going to add this as a 2.3 PDF. Done. Make sure you submit both the PDF and AutoCAD file. Thank you very much. Have a good one.